And joining us now is Seppo Payu of Finland. And Seppo, how are you doing? I'm doing good. It's been two years for me since I was here last time, so I'm stoked to be just back. And that was going to be my first question is, so many of the Americans and the U.S. knows all about you and your skill sets. You were here for a couple of years, traveling around, playing extensively. But with the restrictions, we haven't seen you. Mm -hmm. So have you been playing as much golf just back at home? Yes. Yeah, so just like here in the U.S., the sport has really exploded back in Europe, especially in Finland. So I've had a lot of things to do there with the tour growing there. And we're starting the European Pro Tour in, in Europe. So a lot of things going on there, and I have been playing just as much, if not more, over there. Well, and that was going to be my next question, which is, it seems like you're a very busy guy. And I didn't know how are you dividing up your time of when you're getting out and practicing and playing versus when you're doing things from a business perspective, whether that's with Prodigy mm -hmm. or the Pro Tour and everything else that you're doing. How do you... It's about 50-50, because I still want to play competitively and be as good as I can. But at the same time, I enjoy doing all the work stuff that I get to do. So it's about 50-50 and a lot of my work has disc golf involved uh, as a player, like doing videos and, and stuff like that. So I, I still get to throw, uh, but then, yeah, I, it's about 50-50. Last year you played in nine events, but you weren't able to capture any victories. Do you feel like the way you're dividing your time is hurting the scores that you're putting up on the course? It's probably a part of it, but I think the biggest part is just that in 2019, like halfway through the season, I I went into this really deep slump, actually, and it took me about almost two years to get out of it, honestly. Uh, and uh, now I'm feeling good, back to my normal. And uh, yeah, that was probably the biggest reason. And also just the level has grown so much. Like it's no gimme to win a tournament. Like you would have to play very well and still might not even get top three. So I had some pretty good finishes, but uh, didn't get a win. I got a couple podiums, but it's mainly because of the good play from others and uh, my not so great play <laughs> well that's pretty obvious <laughs> uh, what has been the most exciting about that growth that you speak of uh especially over in finland in your home country uh what, what are you seeing specifically that excites you so much uh it's a little different uh, in finland actually to hear the biggest growth has been in kids the kids have started to play the sport which before was maybe five to ten percent of uh, the players were like 15 and under but now i would say 40 percent of the players are probably 15 and under so they really picked up the game and i think with covid and them not being able to practice ice hockey in the arena then they wanted to go out and uh, play frisbee and they picked it up from TikTok and youtube actually <laughs> and that was the growth for them well, it's a little scary to think we've seen so many prodigies and so many young superstars come from uh, over in your area. So it's a little scary to think we've got even more superstars that are young yeah. and uh, trying to come up through the ranks. My last question, we'll go back just a minute to you said you had the slump. Was there anything you could share with the world that helped get you through it? Was it was it all internal and personal mm -hmm. or was there anything that you could share with the world that you found helped, uh, you know, get you past it? I've gone through slumps, obviously I've played for a long time, so there are slumps and you can't avoid them. But that one was definitely the biggest one for me and uh, there were times that I thought that this was it for me. Like I had some like major yipsies, you know, I just couldn't get the disc out of my hand. So uh, I just had to be alone, practice by myself and really go through it like get good enough shots by myself where I feel comfortable going in front of everybody to do it again because uh, whenever I was in front of any, everybody, I got even more nervous and it would be even worse. So I, I took some time for myself and uh, practiced. That was well, it. We're looking forward to seeing what you can do here at the LBC. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Thank Here's you. Zoe. Hi, Seppo. Hi. We're so happy to have you back. Thank you <laughs> Thank for joining you. us here for Las Vegas Challenge. Yeah. Um, in years past, you've you've been all around it, but never quite a top 10 finish. What is going to be your attack plan for the courses this year to get into those top mm. 10 rankings? I, I was just thinking about it the other day, and I think after all, you got to play somewhat safe here. It always depends on the conditions, but if it gets any windy, you just want to avoid OBs pretty much. And uh, that'll take you a long way. And... Uh, 
yeah, I mean, there's nothing really that I have done wrong other than just not execute it perfectly. So uh, I'm just looking to be consistent, and, and that's about it pretty much. All right. And you've been to the United States many times, um, traveled a lot of the tours, uh, and then the pandemic took you away from us for a while. Yeah. But now that you're back, uh, what would be what's different for you this year in comparison to previous tours? The difference is actually way bigger than I was expecting. I knew that the sport has grown here, but I didn't know it's, it was going to be on this level, like just this moment right here that we're having. It's like going like five, four, three, you know, we're alive. <laughs> that just yeah. uh, that wouldn't have happened before, I don't think. And uh, it just, uh, it's awesome to see. And there was this one guy the other day uh, driving a cart on the course and just taking notes on the tee pads, like how they're shaped and stuff for, for Nate and uh, uh, Terry for the live commentary. So that's great to see. The standards are up. Yeah. Um, and you've been with Prodigy for a long time. Can you tell us, is there any new discs or favorite molds in the bag this year? Many new molds coming up, actually. And uh, we are doing uh, collaborations with Airborne, for example. So Kale Leviska uh, got to design his own driver, which is Falcor. And uh, that's going to be going a long ways for me this week. Awesome. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Hey, Seppo, Mitch Phillips with Gatekeeper Media. Great to have you back. Uh, I was fortunate to be able to follow you along with Prodigy Disc Pro Tour this last year. Um, talk to you a little bit about you know your role in that. You've been a huge uh, fan. I mean, your family and a huge bit of taking Prodigy and making Prodigy Disc Europe. Talk a little bit about that and the scene of that tour and just your role in that. Uh, my role in the tour is pretty much marketing the tour by making YouTube videos from each one. So I make sort of like uh, course reviews with usually the local pro that I take with me and they get to tell me about the course. And uh, that is pretty much it. So promoting it uh, on my on my social medias and YouTubes and all that. And uh, I'm still a player in the tour, uh, but obviously my whole family is involved and we got a bunch of employees. So I'm staying with them and helping them with uh, anything they need. Uh, but for the most part, it's promotion. Uh, talk a little bit about your play during that tour. I mean, second at Turku, third at Tampere. I mean, some great finishes, but then, like you said, just some inconsistencies in it. Um, something that saw change over the time was your putting. You seem to be trying out some different styles and mm -hmm. trying to find something that works inside the circle, outside the circle. Have you been able to lock into that? And I mean, then coming to this wind, you know. I was playing with this uh, different putting style once again uh, after the season, but I, I did go back to my normal putting uh, a little bit more. Uh, I have figured out a few things uh, what comes to technique and uh, I think they have definitely helped and I got to play the skins match today for the GK Pro and I think it showed pretty well. Awesome. Last question. Where did, can we get those sweaters, man? People in the YouTube comments <laughs> freaking out about it. We've seen them all with the, all the great branding. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's the only person I've seen with this, such a sick sweater, bro. It's a Nike golf sweater. Yeah. Uh, secrets out. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for bringing the style over here, man. Excited Thank to you. see you. Thanks. Hi, Seppo. Grant Zellner, PDGA. You were the 2018 PDGA European Player of the Year. You're largely one of the faces of European disc golf. And then the pandemic hit. Do you feel like that stalled some momentum that you had built over the years? And now that you're back and it's 2022, how will you define success this year? I, I think it probably did. But at the same time, I was, I was really happy to be just back at home. I didn't have the desire really to be here in the US other than you know missing my friends and and uh, stuff like that but uh, disc golf in Europe as I said has grown so much that I just enjoyed it so much uh, I didn't really have the desire to be here but I think uh, this year I'm not really doing the full tour in the US so I'm, I'm not gonna be seen on the top all the time since I'm only playing two or three events but uh, I think uh, consistency is going to be the thing and this year my motto is most fun wins so even even if I don't play good I just want to have fun because if you have fun there's really nothing better you don't even need to win if you have more fun than the others most fun wins well said thank you Sefo. thank you